Are you ready for two IntelliSense tips in Power Query, some other Power Query hacks, and a quick demo of data flows and how they can now feed into Excel? If you are, let's go. Okay, I'm gonna start here in data flows. I'll build a very quick one. This is a Power BI feature. You need a Power BI Pro license and a workspace in Power BI to do this. And then I'll show you how you pull it into Excel and a couple of tips along the way in Power Query. Okay, so I'm in my workspace. I say new data flow. Okay, data flow is Power Query online. I go add new tables. And then it prompts me with different sources to connect to this list gets bigger all the time. Okay, I'm just gonna to connect to an Excel workbook sitting on my OneDrive. So here we go, Excel. I'll browse my OneDrive. This is a nice feature. And my list of OneDrive files should pop up. Okay, I'm gonna to go to my data flow demo. Here we go, some random data that I'm gonna to connect to and select. Eventually a SharePoint version of this will come as well. I think by the end of the year, hopefully. Okay, we are just gonna click on next on the bottom right hand corner. We're then hooking into the Excel file. There's a table called table of data and I'm going to uh, go transform down the bottom corner. And now we've centralized our data into this data flow. Okay, essentially what data flows are is power query tables. And if you have a number of these tables, they all roll up into one data flow. Essentially, the data is stored as CSV files in some data lake somewhere. Okay, so here's my data. Um, let's say I want to do one tidy up step so that multiple users can then use this data in the way it's meant to be used. I'll do something really simple, like highlight these four. I'll get rid of the dashes and replace them with nulls. So right click, replace values, find the dash, replace with nothing, click OK. Okay, there's probably other tidy up stuff I would do here if it's gonna be reused in lots of different reports. But for example purposes, let's just stop there. Okay, this query is called table of data. You could give it a proper name, much more sensible than that. But let's just say save and close. Away it goes and it'll ask you, what do you wanna name this data flow? So. Remember, a data flow is really a folder of multiple tables of data. So let's call this my um, demo uh, Excel DF for data flow, okay? And click this refresh now, otherwise your data flow table is essentially empty. It doesn't actually load it as a CSV. Okay, so now I've got this data flow sitting there in the cloud. What do I do? Okay, I'm opening up Excel. In the insider or beta channel of Excel, you can now go data, get data from Power Platform, from data flow, okay? If you haven't got this button yet, this is still possible. I'll show you how in a second. So I'm clicking on from data flows. It'll probably prompt you to sign in um, and you jump through the sign in hoops. Here's my workspaces. Here's the YouTube demo, and here's the demo Excel DF, okay? And in there is my table of data. And I can just right click and say transform. So I'm now connecting up to that data flow. Data flows are just a really good way of centralizing your data, or if you've got a really slow system, pull it into a data flow first and then build your reports off it. There's lots of scenarios. I've got a full video on data flows um, I'll put a link, the link will pop up in a second. Check out the link at the end as well and in the show notes. Okay, so here's my cleaned up data. Notice that all the dashes have been have gone. Okay, if you don't have that button, check this out. If I click on source, this formula here, power platform dot data flows brackets null. If you just type that in to a blank query in the current channel of Excel, it should just work. Give it a go, okay? Right, little tip. This column, I want to um, make it wider. It's truncated, but it's the far right and you can't make it wider, it just won't drag. So two little hacks. 
Okay, one's even simpler than the old one I used to show people. So the old one I used to show people with this, I would move this, so right click, move to beginning. Okay, I would then make it wider. And I would then delete this step that got created. Okay, so just, I'm just deleting this reordered step. And then bizarrely, the column's wider, which is a great little hack, okay? But let me show you a different way. Okay, if I make this narrower, you know, annoyingly, I can't make it wider again. But check this out. You can zoom in with Power Query with Control Shift Plus. Okay, you can call, Control Shift Plus zooms in, but it also, Control Shift Minus zooms out. So if you zoom out, you can then make the column wider. And then when you zoom back in, Control Shift Plus, it's there, wider for you to play about with. So Control Shift Minus, Control Shift Plus. Okay, awesome. Right, last couple of little tips. Um, I'm gonna do a blank query. So on the Home tab, I'm gonna say, uh, where are we? New source, uh, other sources, blank query. I can never remember what that is. I always add this to my Quick Access Toolbar, by the way. So other sources, right click, add to Quick Access Toolbar. Here it is up here. I always add this toolbar below the ribbon. So there it is. And then blank query is just there at a click. Okay, so blank query. Let's just do the date of refresh. So you start off and here's another little tip. Okay, date time dot local now. That's the formula you need. If you start typing date time, okay, dot and then it doesn't actually even come up and you have to scroll through and it's it's not great. Oh, I can see it there, right? So I, I go down to it and then I click on it and it puts double date time, okay? Date time, date time. Don't write your formulas with a dot. Don't use the dot, okay? So this is the, what you do. You say equals local now, okay? There it is, date time local now, click on it. So never type the dot, okay? That's the first tip. And if I open the bracket, press enter. That's the date and time now in this horrible format. If you just want the date, you need to wrap it in a date dot from. But check this out. If you start typing date dot and then you press tab, it wipes out your other formula. Okay. So a couple of ways of doing this. Um, one is to just nudge a little space. Another one is highlight the existing formula. I want to put brackets around the whole thing. Shift, open bracket, actually puts double brackets. So show, let me show you. Shift, open the bracket. It puts the opening and the closing bracket at the end, okay? And then I can do, um, I want to do date dot from, so I'll just start typing from. There we go. And then I can just press tab. Beautiful. Okay, just click on the tick. So shift and bracket, puts brackets around. Never type the dot. Top tips. So there we go. There's a few little tips. Hope you find those useful. Let me know what you think. Please subscribe and let people know about this channel. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.